Hey, hi, welcome to this first video of this Lead Code Weekly. And in this particular video, we're going to talk about this problem, maximum good people based on statements, which is a weekly contest problem from Lead Code. And it's a very, very nice problem. Uh, I have removed all the difficulty. You can go into the link from the description and anyways, check this out. But let's try to solve this problem and then we will look at what kind of difficulty did we solve. Okay. So before we move into the problem, the, st uh, the statement that is generally true for all my art coder, lead code and code forces weekly is true is that you have to comment below after this particular video that what is that one thing that you learned from this video and be the, like, keep it independent from somebody else. Like what is your personal learning is what you want to comment on, on the particular video. Okay. So let's start with the problem. This is a very, very, uh, nice problem. I would say, okay. so like there are two types of person, a good person and a bad person and good person always is tells truth. The bad person who might tell truth and might lie. I don't know how many of us are good person. At least I'm a bad person because I might have lied in my whole lifetime at least once. Okay. So by this logic, everybody is a, is a bad person. So you're given a zero index to the array statements and cross n. So zero means that I says that J is bad. One says that I says that J is good. And two says that, uh, no information, right? So, so every like I to I is two because nobody can tell anything about themselves. I mean, they could have given some value. It doesn't really matter. Maximum number of people who can be good based on the statement made by n people. So we are given uh, statements of an n cross n, like everybody makes a statement about something else or they might not make, which is the second one. Second case, two case. And we have to find the biggest possible group. Hmm. Seems interesting. So person one states that, so let's take an example. Zero states, person one is good. One states, zero is good. Two states, that person one is bad. So zero one can together be good and uh, like two cannot be good because he is saying one is bad. So he has to be bad. So two is obviously the optimal answer. For two persons, obviously one of them has to be correct anyways. So it's a very obvious, uh, obvious case. So N is of tilt 15, which is a very important part of this reading, right? That, okay, uh, there's only 15 people and statements are given. So that's there for the reading part. I think makes sense that we are given some information between people and we need to decide the biggest group, which we can see term as good, right? Rest are obviously bad. We need to like check whether the statements are going to be coherent with that particular group assignment of good and bad, right? So let's move into then like observation phase, right? So we have this reading done. So now we understand what the problem is. And let's try to go ahead and like move to the next state. So we have read, observe, observe, or maybe solve the problem. Then we go into formulate, right? On how we will do this in code, some high level views, and then coding and debugging is something with that we don't take in this series. So read, observe, and then formulate. So let's move into observing, right? So we are given. 15 people, 15 cross 15 information. And we need to check whether this is true or not. How will we do that? Hmm. So one thing that comes into mind is maybe like there are informations given to us. So what kind of problem can this be in? So a very simple way to solve these kind of problems is to write the techniques that can be used. So uh, let's simply enumerate them. Number one is brute. Number two is greedy. Number three is let's say binary search. Number four is DP. Number five is maybe graphs because this can formulate some way in a, gra in a graph way. Uh, number six, maths maybe. I mean, I don't think any other topic can be helpful in this problem, right? Now let's, let's go with elimination, right? Since it's 15, brute force can be a possibility. So I cannot eliminate that out. Um, binary search doesn't really seem like binary search because there is nothing to minimize and maximize. Um, because it might so be that 14 group, like X groups is possible, but X plus one is not possible. And then X plus two is again possible, right? So it might be possible that way. So binary search doesn't really seem to be the correct direction in this problem. DP can be there, but again, if we have to keep a DP, we will have to keep some sort of mask. So it's going to, if it's going to be DP, it's going to be DP plus bit mask, right? So it's again possible, right? Graphs uh, might be feasible, but again, there are too many informations. So we let's keep it right now as an option. Maths doesn't seem like maths because it doesn't really have anything. So when you have 15, right? Uh, brute force is something that you should definitely think about at the start, right? When you have 30, 
uh, maybe go into meet in the middle kind of stuff in brute, fo brute force. But when you have 15, so every person can be good or bad, right? So it's essentially like out of n people, we are choosing a subset of good people, right? So we can enumerate on all subsets of two to the power n using a mask very simply, right? And then for that particular mask, so let's say once we are kind of checking that, okay, this these people are good, these people are bad. Can we check this? Check that very efficiently? And it turns out, yes, we can actually do that, right? Why? Because when we say that a person is good, uh, his whole state, all statements should be correct. Bad person doesn't really matter anymore, right? So bad person can true and lie. So there is no information over there. Good ones, information should be correct. So if, if let's say X is good, right? And he says, uh, good to Y, then Y has to be good. And if he says bad to some Z, then Z has to be bad. This is the only thing that needs to be checked, right? So only the information of good people matter. Right. So what we can do is we can kind of for every two to the power n, let's say the set is some a, b, c are the good people, dot dot dot, and then uh, x, y, z dot 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 are the bad people. So what we can do is we can go over the good people in the mask. So we can kind of do two to the power n subset mask kind of to generate all the subsets, and then go over the elements and try to see their rows. Right. So from i to j, what is the information given? So for that, you just need to check whether like if x says if like, let's say the matrix of X to Y is zero, which means you need to check whether Y is also good or not. Right. If this is equal to one, then you have to check whether like Y is bad or not. Right. So this is, has to be done as a check, but that can be done very easily in the bit mask. Right. So this is essentially a bit mask DP pro bit mask kind of a problem to check these things. But again, we can go over the like correct numbers and check them up. Right. So this seems to be pretty much possible. Like we will have n numbers to iterate on. And for every number, we will have to iterate over all of its like the numbers from this side. So that would be n. In fact, we only have to iterate over the good people. So on an average, the number of good people across all mask has would be around n by two. So the constraint, the constants are also small, right? So in that sense, it's something like order n square two to the power n which seems to be a good kind of an constraint uh, for such problems, right? n square into two to the power and you can plug in 15 and try to see what is the value. Um, essentially this should pass with the time limit, right? So that kind of makes this as a feasible solution, right? We didn't even have to explore these things right now. It might be possible to maybe optimize this to maybe make this check better and make it make, let's say n into two to the power n. But since this is something that is feasible right now, I would not go about thinking more and move to the formulate step next, right? So when we try to formulate now, right? So now we have a brute force kind of an approach. We kind of try every subset as a good set and the rest are bad. And then we try to solve the problem. So essentially we are going to do is for like all mask, right? We like for all ones in the mask, what we're going to do is loop over row and validate, right? If all are like for all mask, if all true, then we, then this is, this mask is feasible or else not. If it's, uh, then we think about, okay, if that is feasible, how do we go forward? So if it's feasible, we go ahead and like answer equal to max of answer comma number of ones in the mask, which you can easily find using built in pop count stuff. And then we can solve the problem going forward. Right. So these things can be done going forward. So this is for all mask. We try to check if feasible, right? And this is for feasibility check that if all of the good people's informations are correct. So this is all we need to check in the formulate. And this is order n to the power n. This is order n or order, order number of ones actually order n, right? So n square is over here. And then this is just order one. So this should be pretty much simple to write. There are going to be some bit manipulation level stuff to do in the implementation part, but that is something I'm not going to be covering in this video, but this is the whole idea, right? So essentially when you are kind of solving this problem, like when you start, like get started with brute force itself, it should make sense because 15 was given in the problem, right? So that is one thing that kind of gave away the solution. And again, this is something which you can do very neatly in using bit manipulation stuff, right? So that is mostly what is going to be the solution idea for this problem, most probably. And this is the three steps read formulate and read observation and formulate, right? This is how I would have thought about this problem. Pretty easy. But when we look at the tag for this problem on lead code, like since it's a brute force problem, but it's actually a hard problem, right? 
but anyways this is fairly doable problem i suppose and it was like from a weekly contest so you could have solved a hard problem if you understand this bit manipulation stuff so go ahead and check the link descriptions uh there is a link for this particular problem go ahead and code this up it's a fairly straightforward pro code and i hope you kind of learned some value out of it so the, as per the setup make sure that you comment on what you learned from this particular problem you specifically don't rely on others comment your what's what was your learning because then it will persist with you when you write something it gets ingrained in your mind that is there also if you like this particular streams do like kind of like the video and subscribe to the channel so that you kind of get the updates on such things do press the bell icon also that gives the notification right and do support the channel if you are liking the way the contents are created i understand that i'm not going into every nitty gritty detail of the stuff but again like a lot of problem solving approach on how you think about problems is what i want to actually aim for so if you want some if you have some suggestions feel free to put them in the comments as well i do read all of them as of now okay so that's all for this video see you in the next one bye bye